good morning so in this session we are going to discuss the signal flow graph a couple of examples on uh, nodal equations as well as on uh, masson's gain formula that how to solve the signal flow graph in effective manner so let's take example number 1 which represents the following set of equations we have given uh, you can say four four equations so in this we have the step 1 that we have to write all these nodes you can see this is uh, we are going from x1 up to x5 so we have to draw that many number of nodes x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and then we have to draw the signal flow graph using these nodal equations so the question can be posed in both ways that signal flow graph is given to us and we can write the nodal equations so this is the reverse questions where nodal equations are given want to you and we have to draw the signal flow graph so as we mentioned the sign of signal flow graph is unilateral so that plays a important role so here you can see the first equation belongs to node number 2 that x2 equal to a times x1 plus f times x2 so that's what it is a times x1 where a is the transmittance coming from node x1 and then we have f times x2 so that's a you can say self loop f times x Two. So that completes two signals are coming towards x2. You can say a times x1 plus f times x2. That is the first nodal equation. Next comes the second nodal equation for node x3, which is b times x2, and then the second channel is coming as a feedback from node x4, e times x4. So that completes two arrows. You can see two arrows are coming towards node x3. So simple way to write the nodal equation is that we have to sum them all signals which are coming towards a particular node. So then we have Have the x4 next node c times x3 plus h times x5 then last d times x4 and then g times x2 so that completes how to make the signal flow graph using the nodal equation so next after the signal flow graph is ready we have to apply the masson's gain formula which is equal to summation k that goes from 1 to k pk delta k divided by delta where pk is the forward path transmittance of the kth path delta k is the path factor and delta is the graph determinant that we have discussed in the last session so we have the forward paths let's try to see how many forward paths we have so we have this the red path going from x1 to x5 as a b c d and then we have the another path as this blue path going from a to g so x1 to x2 and then followed by directly root g to x5 so these are the two forward paths then followed by a loops so we have loop 1 in orange color f loop 2 having transmittance c e and then we have loop 3 as transmittance d and h so this is d this is h so loop means that you start from a particular node and reach to the same node back without repeating a node and then we have to find out the A pair of loops which are non touching so we can see the first of all as this green pair this one and this one both are completely independent or completely isolated from each other so l1 l2 loop which are a non touching pair then you have this l1 l3 again as a non touching pair whereas you can see this l2 l3 have a common node over here so that follows that uh, l2 l3 does not qualify into this category because they are forming a touching pair whereas l1 l3 L2 and L1 L3 are a pair of non-touching loops. So then we have to find out the path factors. So path factors are dependent on particular path. So let's consider the first path as A B C D path. So you can see on the A B C D path, all the loops are touching to path A B C D. So delta one remains one. And if you go to the second path, the blue path having value A to G, here you can see the green loop is completely isolated. That's why the path factor is one minus the loop transmittance of Of the green path that is one minus L two. So these are the two path factors, and then comes the graph determinant, which is equal to one minus summation of all individual loop transmittances, then plus of a pair of loops which are non-touching, then minus of all triplets, then plus of all quartlets. So there is you can say two non-touching pairs which we have already written. The third one does not qualify, and there is the triplet. Triplet is also touching, so that will not come. So this is the graph determinant. So we have now calculated. Calculated all the individual components. Now we can plug in all these values in the Masson's gain formula, which is mentioned over here. So I think this k should be equal to n, where n is the number of forward paths. So we have to find out x5 by x1. There are only two forward paths, so n becomes two. So we have to go from k equal to one to two. That makes p1 delta one plus p2 delta two divided by delta. This everything we have calculated in the last slide. So we just have to plug in the values, and this is the final answer. So you can solve. 
solve this problem using block diagram reduction or by using signal flow graph your end result will turn out to be same but here you can see or we can solve this problem by drawing only one figure there is no need to redraw it again again and again like the way we have to do it in the block diagram reduction let's go to next problem so this is you can say a much complicated problem as compared to the previous one so first of all we have to draw the signal flow graph from here and then we have to solve it using mason's gain formula so here you can see how many summing junctions are there there are five summing junctions so this is a straightforward no issues now comes this one first summing junction you can say this is summing junction followed by a takeoff point this is also the same category summing junction followed by takeoff point third one is also same category summing junction followed by takeoff point and the fourth one is also some injunction followed by takeoff point so if you recall the previous session we have discussed if this will come under the maybe the first category where the summing junction followed by takeoff point we have to represent it with the help of a single node so if it is the other way around it's a takeoff point followed by a summing junction then we have a two nodes with the unit transmittance in between them so we'll see that also case in the next example let's see this case so first of all we have to see the nodes so you can see this is the first node where the input goes and breaks into two channels then each summing junction is a node and in this case it is a single node as i mentioned because it comes in the first category summing junction followed by a takeoff point represents by single node then the red node with the red junction and there is a blue one and finally this is the summing junction last summing junction over here that will comprise of the node so these are the six you can say nodes we have here you can see this is the first input r then we go to a then r comes to downwards e this is the way it has to be drawn then to b then the lower channel goes up to f then the feedback you can say this feedback will be minus c as i mentioned you have to take the sign at the summing junction along with the transmittance so it's not c it's minus c as the feedback same thing with the g at the downward so that will minus g as the feedback path then d in the upper channel and h in the lower channel and finally it's the output as c so this is the major blocks then we come with the interconnections so the first interconnection you can see that joins from this to this using i and there is a second interconnection which joins the upper to lower channel with the help of j we have j and then we have this as i and we have to keep it in mind that uh, these points don't match they don't connect with each other so this is the path now we have to see how many forward paths are there so the first forward path is a b d second forward path is e f h the third forward path is a j h the next forward path is e i d so do we have any other forward path e to i i to minus c then to j then to h so as i mentioned e i c j h and then a j g i d so these are the six forward path from where you can go from r to c input to output so then we have the loops so this is the first loop minus b c having transmittance second loop having transmittance minus f g then we have the third loop also i c j g both the negative signs of c and j will get multiplied and add up to positive sign so now comes the path factor how many path factors will come six path factors will come because here we have n equal to six which is equal to the number of forward paths so similarly we have delta 1 delta 2 up to delta 6 so let's see what is delta 1 delta 1 belongs to the first path which is equal to a b d so in this path a b d this loop f g will be completely isolated no node is being shared so we have delta 1 as 1 minus l2 and l2 being minus f g that becomes 1 plus f g so we have the similar case with them it's mirror image which is equal to the path second e f h so for e f h path you can see the upper loop b c will Will be completely isolated so we have 1 plus bc so all the path factors are not defined so now comes the pair of non-touching loops so how many loops were there three loops were there so the uppermost loop bc and the lowermost loop fg they are completely isolated from each other no node is being shared so that will make a pair of non-touching loops that's the only possible the other third complicated loop will be touching to all the other loops so that's what we have the graph determinant one minus loop transmittance of all individual loops plus a pair of loops which are having non-touching pair so l1 l2 is a non-touching pair so that will make delta the graph determinant so we have all we have plugged in all these values and you can calculate the result so now let's move to signal flow graph representing the different case now here we have two kind of pairs where you can say this is the first category take a point followed by a summing junction and then we have the second category over here also so both categories were there so but in this we have to take the innermost first so let's see this so these are the possible junctions which are marked over here 
So as I mentioned, this pair comes to the second category, which is a takeoff point followed by a summing junction. So we have to represent it with the help of two nodes. So the first node will belong to here and the second node will belong to here with the unit transmittance in between them. So this will start with R, then finally C, then this is G1 and then this is 1 because of uh, this combination. And then finally we have G2 and then next we have to take the innermost first. So this belongs to this and this belongs to this. So the unit transmittance of the first case and unit transmittance of the second case. Then we can join the remaining paths. So here you can see we start with the black mark and goes up to the blue mark. That's G3. So then comes the minus H1 and minus H2. So that's the figure we have, the signal flow graph from the corresponding block diagram. Now we have to again apply the Mason's gain formula and we have to solve it. Because there are two forward paths, the value of n is equal to 2, which comes on the top of the summation. So this is the first forward path P1, G1, G2 and this is the second forward path G1, G3. So then we have the loops. So this is the first loop G2, 1, minus H2. So that becomes minus G2, H2 and then this is the second loop, which is equal to G1, G2, minus H1. That makes minus g1 g2 h1 do we have another loop yes we have another loop that goes from g1 g3 then minus h2 then g2 then minus h1 so 2 minus on the way that makes plus so this you have to be very careful here you can see this is a slightly complicated loop but if you see it carefully none of the nodes is being repeated so we go from here to g1 you can see mark path is already defined in the green color so from g1 then follow the lower path g3 then go to by h2 then from here to g2 and then from here by using minus h1 back to the original point so there are two minus signs on the way so so we have G1, G3, H2, G2, H1. So now if you see the loops, you can also see the path factors. So all the loops, you can say touching both the paths. So two path factors and all the three loops are touching to this. So both the path factors will remain one. Delta 1 is 1, Delta 2 is also. Next comes the graph determinant, which is equal to Delta 1 minus individual loops. And out of the three loops, there is no combination of non-touching pair. So we'll just plug in the values. So this is the final value of the delta so then we have to plug in these values and this is the final result thank you